okay, and then we'll work with you. Well, my name is Allison, and I'm in Arizona, and I am, you know, this is this is my, you know, I like afternoon programs actually quite a lot, so this is a good time for me to catch radio shows. So saw you on the air, I thought, huh. And I recognize Suzanne's name because she, oh, hey, you know what, let me think about it. Maybe it was the both of you. But I recognize Suzanne's voice. I recognize her name, but I recognize her voice. From, she did a little mini reading for me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, in the recent past, um, about a uh, re- a relocation question that I had, and I recognized her voice, and I rem- I still remember what her answer was because I I posed the question of I had it that I had two different locations. Uh, um, Two different locations, meaning two different states, not cities, but two different states, uh, candidate states in mind for the for the relocation. And she, um, I don't know, if she's if she's on the air, if she's listening right now. But I'm, I'm listening rec- right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and uh, yeah, I reckon, and I remember talking about it, and and what your and what your response was to that question, and <laughs> and uh, I and the voice and everything. We talked about it a little bit. So um, I just thought, oh, yeah, I remember them. So <laughs> I thought, oh, I yeah. Them the yeah, I remember you now because your number, I kept saying Denver 303, and you were like Arizona. It's just my – you told That's me when you were old, in Arizona. I had that phone number. I used to live in I used to live in Colorado, and I, I've i moved – I mean, oh, my God. I You know, <laughs> like I left – I bailed from Colorado in, you know, 2000. 2000, yeah, like years, seven, eight years ago. So I just kept the phone number because I like it. If I changed okay. my phone number every time I moved, I would never be able. I would have to. I would never know my own phone number. But my phone number is so memorable. It's so easy. I said, I'm just keeping my number. I'm just going to keep changing addresses. But the but the phone number stays the same. <laughs> so okay. they're calling well, the number in history. <laughs> in ancient history. So your name is Allison. Is your name uh-huh. Allison? Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you'll, since you're already plugged into Suzanne and I, uh, go ahead and, uh, Suzanne, I'm going to mute and you take over. So this is Allison on our show today, and uh, I will get back to Rich. Oh, we're only going to have 15 more minutes. All right. Well, okay. this may or may not be our last one, but go ahead. <coughs> Allison, tell me <laughs> what the weather's like in your area today, please. Well, it is October first. We're still in the hundreds. Mm. Um, I it is it has been the worst summer on record wow. in Arizona wow. for heat for the not for, for in all across the board heat. It is the start of when uh, the, the 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 early start of the hundreds when we get into uh-huh. the hundreds in April. That was early. The amount of one hundred degrees and above days we've had, the duration of the heat. I mean, every factor that you can dream up and that scientists record for heat, it has been broken. And also we've had the driest record, uh, driest monsoons. Most people don't know that Arizona has a monsoon season. Right. And our monsoon season runs officially from June 15th to September 30th. That's when the monsoons are very intense. They come and go, but they are also uh, they also supply the water that Arizona <laughs> needs for the year. So it's like you know, crash course in water, and then and then we're supplied. We've had we got and normally uh, we're supposed to get normal normal year. Uh, in those few months in Phoenix, I'm just talking Phoenix now because it's a little bit different depending on where you go in Arizona, but I'm talking specifically Phoenix area. We're, we're supposed to get about two and a half inches to three inches of rain in that monsoon season. We have had one inch, and it happened in in two separate days, one day in, June, uh, one day in July and one day in August. That's it. Wow. So wow, that is amazing. So we are in a very... Well, drought doesn't begin to describe it. That's the weather that's happening in in in, in Arizona. It's going to get worse. It's 
I, I keep saying it's the dust bowl in the making all over again. But but that's you asked you asked the question, but I have to really uh, give a fuller description because this has been the most severe uh, summer we've ever had, and in conjunction with the lockdown, you know, with the pandemic lockdown, it has been brutal here. It's just been brutal, 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 brutal summer. I can't wait to get out of here. I am so done with this. Anyway, so that's. So we're over 100. We're supposed to be, you know, we're still over 100. I think it's 105 or something like that today. And we're in October. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. So, yeah. so I, that's I'm going to give you a, I'm gonna, that's okay. So I have been in um, Arizona during the monsoon season. And, oh, great. Um, and, and I am familiar with the, uh, for the longest time, the uh, record for Phoenix was, uh-huh. 48 days where it was 108 day and night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so right. to hear that that record has been broken is kind of disturbing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, based on what you told me, based on what you, you told me, and, and I, I, you know, Phoenix and Tucson, I, I like Tucson because yeah. at least it cools down at night. But um, I do love I love Phoenix. I love Phoenix too. Oh, God. Um, but oh, only bring me there between November and April, okay? Uh, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, we we are snowbird. We are snowbird country, man. And yeah. a lot of snowbirds they leave. They don't wait. They leave. Um, they they leave like they start like oh, like they start to leave in February because even though we haven't reached 100 degrees yet in February, it used to be we would hit 100 degrees in in May. May, early right. May, but now it's moved to April. And so um, the snowbirds, you can see the snowbirds are getting out earlier and earlier in the year. Each, I, wouldn't each be time. Surprised if, I wouldn't be surprised if in, in, in five years down the road that the snowbirds are bailing in January. Like January 1st, okay. oh. we're out. Once so, I want to say something. I want to so share me. with you ladies in the world out there real quick, Suzanne, that the two times in my mind that I remember with my husband's was in out there, either in Tucson or Phoenix area, mm-hmm. in a hot tub looking up at the stars. And this mm-hmm. is two times, and, you know, I'm, I'm 68, I'll be 69 December, but I've had several husbands in the military, but I was going... And I just had to say that for some reason, you girls brought back the memories of having my <laughs> arms on the edge in my bathing suit, looking up at the stars and feeling oh. like I was in contact with the, everything universally all the way up. I just had an out of body experience. So that's one yeah. place out there, folks, in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess that's where you're talking about, right? In Colorado, right. too. I love Colorado. But I just had to say that, that that's some of the most beautiful open sky and stars, especially if you're sitting in a hot tub. Okay, back to you, girls. <laughs> oh. So, so Allison, you have described a story about yourself that I find really interesting. You've described a story of having endured challenges having um, dealt yes. with information from the past and having um, having to overcome your own personal conflicts in order to achieve a goal. This is what you have described to me, okay? Yes. So I want you to realize that you really are in a transition stage. This is a difficult stage because there's so many factors that are out of your control. Yes. So. So here's here's how I've been approaching things. And, um, you know, my husband's an artist and I'm a psychic. And I always tell people I'm a professional psychic because I've been figuring out how to get paid for my work. Um, but but I've figured out how to make a living during, the, during this pandemic. And the funny thing of it is is that 90% of the phone, well, most, none of the phone calls really relate. You're the first person to mention oh, these are my circumstances due to the current pandemic. But you have a really interesting part of yourself. You have an ability to accumulate knowledge and information, and you really are one of those people that needs to find an outlet to share your information. I think this is your great um, frustration, that you have knowledge, you have understanding, you have wisdom, and you have... um, that to share, and you haven't found an avenue, a venue, in order to take and connect with that. 
And so this is the problem. Um, you know, there's other things that you would like, but I think that if you really felt that your knowledge, which is your blessing, was being shared, that you would benefit other people and other people in turn would benefit you. And I, I agree that this is where the disconnect is at the moment. So that's my encouragement for you is to ask, you know, the affirmation is, is um, the universe provides me with the illumination in order to share my gift. The universe provides me with the illumination to share my gift. And then and then your need is answered. But I would if I were you, I would feel frustrated to have as much knowledge, information and wisdom and not to be sharing it would become a source of difficulty for me if I were in your spot, just being honest mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. So I'm not I don't know you. I can't see your face, I can't pick up any of your indications. Yeah. But is that does that fit with what's going on in your life today? Well, it's actually kind of it kind of circles back to um, why why I remember uh, have your name and having spoken with you on on another radio show in the it was in the evening. So um, when I had asked about the two different locations, state locations for a move that is a pretty substantial move, and and it's funny that because uh, because and I'm not going to say what the states are. And mm-hmm. I'm not even sure I said what the states were. I think I called them state one and state two, you know, or A and B, okay. something like that, uh-huh. even when you and I talked before, because I don't want to identify them and I right. uh, for a number of reasons. And so, um, and so it's so funny because um, you had said A was better, and I looked into, had been looking into A pretty seriously, and, and, and but B, B is the one that keeps calling to me. B is the one that I, in my heart, it makes my heart go really flutter. B is the mm-hmm. one that all signs point to B. All, all signs keep pointing to B. My own spirit keeps pointing me to B. So, and I remember that really because you said A, you said, you said A, you should go to A, but there's, you'll have a feeling about B. Well, B's one out. I'm going to say that A is really off the table now. But part of what uh, is so important about B is not just the physicality of the of the location and the geography and the sea, you know, the climate and all of that, which is very cost of living, all these factors that you have. The politics are very, very important. Most important are the politics, uh, the governor and so on. Is that I'm looking for my tribe, and the tribe is goes back to what you were just talking about is having a having a place where uh, I, I don't know, well, I guess an avenue. Of of a, of a storehouse of experiences and knowledge, life experience. People have said you should write a book. You should write a book. You should write. And I would never write a book about my life. And um, I just uh, that is why B won out. And 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 that actually is probably the number one reason State B wins is because I keep feeling my people are going to be there. My tribe is going to be there. I might find some people I get along with in A, but B is where I feel I'm in my element. And then hopefully this knowledge and everything else that you were just talking about can find an audience. Oh, I don't want to call it an audience. You know, kinship, kinship, kinship. So that, so I had to kind of circle that back because really all the pieces kind of fit into a place in this discussion. So um, mm. I wanted to let you know that. That um, uh, you know it, that it, that I've connected all the dots <laughs> from a previous uh, you know from a previous reading as well on the radio. B wins, and I'm liking B. The more I research B, and the more I see what is happening there in the political uh, climate, uh, I, I I keep getting confirmations. That's the place. That's the place, and I just keep getting this feeling that when I get there and get settled in, I'm going to start meeting people, and I'm going to start going, wow, I wish I'd done this sooner, because well, it'll be a dialogue that will resonate. I'm happy for you. I'm really happy for you, and thank you for sharing. And um, it's a really good yeah. point to make, Allison. It's very helpful on your part. You know, there is there is free will. So um, that is the, ultimately, you're the one who decides your own fate. Ultimately, it's your decisions 
and following your own advice that will bring you the greatest happiness. Sometimes just airing out what it is 